Welcome to A2 and happy Mother's Day to all of you. Stand with us and let's worship our God together. Amazing 
redemption shown for all to see. Perfection bore our penalty with a grace so glorious. Immortal day, the veil was torn when mercy dawned a crown of thorns. As law gave way to liberty. Freedom for humanity with a grace so glorious. And oh, the glory of the Savior's love surrounding our surrender to know.
Father, we just pause for a moment and we just thank you so much for how good you are to us. You are worthy of all the glory. We could never even begin to approach giving you the praise and the glory that you are deserving of. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. We love you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to A2 Church. We're so glad you're here. Um, especially if it's your first time here. This is the time we call our connect time where we cross the aisles, shake somebody's hand, hug somebody's neck. Good morning, A2 Church. My name is Chelsea, and we are so excited to have you here with us. Before we go any further, let's take a moment to say a huge Happy Mother's Day to all of the amazing moms, grandmas, and moms to be in the room. Make sure to check out the delicious goodies we have for you in the foyer before you leave. If you're new to A2, thanks so much for taking the time to check us out. And if you call A2 home, thanks for coming back. We're so glad that you're here. In just a few minutes, Chris will be out to continue our series, Goliath, Overcoming Giants, Loudmouse, and Your Greatest Fears. But before we get started, we want to take a moment to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we have planned for you today. Our goal at A2 is simple. We want to glorify God and lead people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to make sure that you know you matter to God and to us, and that you don't leave here with any questions unanswered. In the seat in front of you, you'll find a connection card. Take it out, complete it, and drop it in the container that's going to pass. There's room on the back for you to let us know about your experience today or to sign up for one of our events. Also, if there's something we can join you in praying about, there's a place on the back for you to let us know. We have an amazing prayer team that would love to join you in prayer throughout the week. Hey guys, it's Mary Elizabeth here. I wanted to let you know about our Living Inside Out A2 Kids Summer Camp, June 16th through 21st from 6 to 8 p.m. Kids preschool through grade five are invited to join us on an exciting journey that takes us through the parables of Jesus and how we can put them into practice in our everyday lives. There will be awesome worship, engaging large group lessons, hands-on small group time with friends, and so much more. Register today by marking your connection card. If you're interested in volunteering and being a part of a child's God story, you can mark your connection card or email me at the address below. We believe guys are at the heart of what God wants to do in our church, communities, families, and world. Guys, you're invited to join us on Sunday, May 18th for a Low Country Boil by Billy Walters and the A-Team. We're talking great food, good guys, a challenging message from special guest and Alabama legend, Jeremiah Castile. Sign up today using the connection card. If you've made a decision to follow Jesus, the next step in your spiritual journey is water baptism. And the next opportunity for you to take this step is Sunday, May 18th. Sign up using your connection card today. If you would like to partner with us in the work we're doing here at A2, you can prepare to do that right now. To give by cash or check, Use one of the envelopes in the back of the seat in front of you. You can also partner with A2 by using our online giving link located on our homepage. Check out your program for more information. Thanks again for being with us at A2 Church. For more information on anything you've heard today, stop by the info desk in the foyer or connect with us online. Good morning, A2 Church. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. As many of you know, for the past four years, our middle daughter Kaylee has been attending the King's College in New York City. And this weekend, Mother's Day weekend, happens to be graduation weekend. And yesterday, she actually graduated. <laughs> we are so excited about that. In yeah. fact, think about it this way, guys. That's two down and only one to go. <laughs> Wait, what about the newest member of our family? He will not be going to college. <laughs> As you can imagine, it wouldn't have been a great Mother's Day weekend for this mom had we been in Birmingham and missed this significant event in our daughter's lives. So this weekend, our entire family, we're in New York City celebrating uh, four years of achievement with Kaylee. 
We miss you guys though. We so miss being with you on Mother's Day. Yes, we do. And today, we just want all the moms in the room and every lady present to know how important you are, that you matter so much to God and you matter to us. And so today, we just hope that you feel loved and celebrated and appreciated for all the hard work that you do. You can know this, we are praying with you we're praying for you, and we're so excited about all that's to come. In fact, this morning, you're going to get to hear from a member of our congregation. She and her husband have been a part of the A2 family for about four years. She is currently a Master's of Divinity student at Beeson Divinity School. She and her husband lead small groups at A2. We are so excited about what God is doing in the lives of Lori Beth Milton and her husband, Robert Milton. And as Jan and I were thinking and praying about this incredibly special day, we felt a leading from God to ask Lori Beth Milton to share this message, this morning's message. So in just a few moments, Lori Beth is going to come and I hope that you will give her an amazing a to welcome. Get behind her. God is already using her, but this morning He is going to use her to speak a word to you. God bless you again, A2 Church. Have an amazing Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. To give by cash or check, use one of the envelopes in the back of the seat in front of you. You can also partner with A2 by using our online giving link located on our homepage. Check out your program for more information. Thanks again for being with us at A2 Church. For more information on anything you've heard today, stop by the info desk in the foyer or connect with us online. Good morning, A2 Church. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. As many of you know, for the past four years, our middle daughter Kaylee has been attending the King's College in New York City. And this weekend, Mother's Day weekend, happens to be graduation weekend. And yesterday, she actually graduated. <laughs> we are so excited about that. In yeah. fact, think about it this way, guys. That's two down and only one to go. <laughs> Wait, what about the newest member of our family? He will not be going to college. <laughs> As you can imagine, it wouldn't have been a great Mother's Day weekend for this mom had we been in Birmingham and missed this significant event in our daughter's lives. So this weekend, our entire family, we're in New York City celebrating uh, four years of achievement with Kaylee. We miss you guys, though. We so miss being with you on Mother's Day. Yes, we do. And today, we just want all the moms in the room and every lady present to know how important you are, that you matter so much to God and you matter to us. And so today, we just hope that you feel loved and celebrated and appreciated for all the hard work that you do. You can know this. We are praying with you. We're praying for you, and we're so excited about all that's to come. In fact, this morning, you're going to get to hear from a member of our congregation. She and her husband have been a part of the A2 family for about four years. She is currently a Master's of Divinity student at Beeson Divinity School. She and her husband lead small groups at A2. We are so excited about what God is doing in the lives of Lori Beth Milton and her husband, Robert Milton. And as Jan and I were thinking and praying about this incredibly special day, we felt a leading from God to ask Lori Beth Milton to share this message, this morning's message. So in just a few moments, Lori Beth is going to come and I hope that you will give her an amazing a to welcome. Get behind her. God is already using her, but this morning, He is going to use her to speak a word to you. God bless you again, A2 Church. Have an amazing Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Good morning. And happy Mother's Day. Yes, there's a couple mothers out there, I guess. You guys, I didn't catch anybody off guard, did I? Okay. Well, I'm Kevin. This is my wife, Shannon Johnson. We're elders here, and we're the leaders of the college group, A2CC College Group, and 
Uh, it's good to hear from our virtual pastor and his wife today as they're in New York celebrating. Yes, thank you, Lee. He's on top of it. Uh, mothers, if you have not gotten your picture made after the service, we have our photo booth set up. We'll print out your pictures and give them to you right away. So don't miss out on that opportunity. And Shannon has some fun stuff to share. Well, I do because I love the way we celebrate here at A2. I think that we celebrate Mother's Day in an awesome way because it's definitely about the mothers who are raising kids and and you've got the little people running around that you're the taxi service and so what for. But it's also about celebrating women and it's about celebrating those spiritual mamas in your life. So I was so blessed when I was growing up to have these women in my life that weren't the moms that I went home home to, but they were the women who poured into my life. So today, when he talks about those photo opportunities out there, you guys, grab somebody who's special to you. Say, come on, let me take a picture. Make it commemorative. And um, one of the things, too, I love to celebrate. I love presents in a big way, and he knows this. And I haven't gotten a present yet, but that's okay because I know I will. Because the boys slept in, and she said, go ahead and let the boys sleep in. So she's getting her present after church today. Because you don't want angry people giving you a present. I want happy people. But social media makes it so much fun to kind of see what everybody's doing, right? And everybody today has the best mom in the world, right? The best, which I love and I think is a lot of fun. But I love the ideas of gifts. Because a lot of people get gifts that will help you around the home, which is nice. They get gifts that you can cook with. Oh, and I think I got one of those, maybe. Just the look on his face. But um, that is an awesome gift if you love to cook, but it's really for the other people in the house because you get to, like, cook and clean again for them, which is great. But there is somebody in here that got it right. Okay, sitting on the front row, yes. Okay, Jabari and Ginger, I don't know if you're Facebook friends with them yet. Whoop, whoop. This man knows what the mother of preschoolers wants. She got noise-canceling earphones. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, guys, if you want to know great gift ideas, talk to Jabari. He can help you. He has listened and paid attention, so good work. That's awesome. And I'm sure yours is fantastic, too. It'll be great. Mine will be fantastic. All right, hold that for a second. We have one more thing we want to talk to you about, too. Um, If you were here last week, you know that today is James Ross's last Sunday with us. And you guys, that's our keyboardist, if you don't know him. James, say hello. Yep. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. And that's a praise God moment right there. You guys, James has answered the call to be a missionary, and it's so amazing that we get to be on his journey with him through prayer and support. And outside at the Welcome Center, you're going to see these little prayer cards, a really cool picture of James to remind you of his coolness. Um, But it also tells you a little bit about what he's going to be doing. And in fact, this Thursday, May 15th, it says, I will be flying to Cairo, Egypt to begin my journey. I ask that you pray with me for protection and provision. The best way to contact me will be through email, gives his email address, or on Facebook. But he's asking that for security reasons, we don't post anything on his Facebook page regarding the work. But you guys, he wants our prayer of protection and provision. So we ask that you take one of these with you, put it on your refrigerator, or put it somewhere where you're going to see that. Because as a mom of, of somebody who answered the call a couple of years ago who went abroad, I felt so good knowing that all of you were praying for Nick. It made me feel good. It made me just know, God, you got this. And people are are definitely praying. So James is going to be out there in between services. So I I really do encourage you, if you haven't met him yet, go meet him in person. Shake his hand. Take a card. Let him know that you're going to be praying for him. I think that's one of the biggest things that we can do. Absolutely. Um, Kevin talked about the connection card. You definitely want to go ahead. You didn't? You want to? Okay. Hi. The connection card. I think most of you, if you're here, have been here, are familiar. The connection card is in the seat back in front of you. And we've got two big events. Cody mentioned them on the screen. We've got water baptism next week. If you would like to be baptized in Believer's Baptism, make sure you fill out the connection card. Put that information on there. We'll be prepared for you next week. 
Uh, also, guys, and this is for guys only, the Low Country Boil, prepared by Billy Walters and the A-Team. Okay, women, we love you, especially on Mother's Day. This is just for guys, though. You want us to kind of have guy time, too. I understand that. So next week, Jeremiah Castile will be here delivering a message. Guys will participate in the Low Country Boil. $10 per person when you get here. Fill it out on the connection card. We want to make sure we don't run, we don't run out of shrimp. So make sure you fill out a connection card. Get it in there, if guys, if you're going to be here for that. Also, yes. as you're preparing the connection card, this is a great time to fill out um, God's tithe, your tithe, God's tithe, God's tithe in your offering. I get those mixed up sometimes. All right, because we're going to be collecting that after the, the next uh, during worship the next special, song. during the next song. Okay, so have those prepared as well. So that's the connection card bit. About it, as Alan and Sierra and the team get ready to sing for us, you're going to hear some awesome Mother Day, Mother's Day melodies. I think medleys, medleys. Yes, that's what we're going to be doing. Yes, and it will be in melodic tune. Um, <laughs> you might be. Um, and then, then we're going to have a really special song too, which I'm super excited um, to hear one of our own young, amazing women sing too. So um, after they sing, be prepared to turn those in. And then we are going to welcome Miss Lori Beth Milton to the stage. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Exciting. All right. i 
series. We've been in this story the past three Sundays, and I was thinking, do you realize that this is normally a children's story? David and Goliath is usually taught to children. It's not normally taught to adults. I'm a church kid, and I grew up in Sunday school, and so that's where I learned about David and Goliath, and I think this is the first time that I've actually been under its teaching since that point, and I think that's sad. I don't know why that is, but even still, Um, It's one of the most well-known Bible stories that there is. And since it's so familiar to us, we think we know everything there is to know about it. And that's fine. That's um, a normal response to a story we know like the back of our hand. Um, I'm not going to tell you anything brand new or mind-blowing today. But it is my hope to take the light of the gospel and shine it on something that is very subtle and creeping 
something that does not have a sound or a smell. You can't see it. It actually boils up from within our hearts very quietly. It is a gentle giant that wreaks so much havoc on our faith. What am I describing? I am describing doubt. And I'm ringing, Chris, bad. Um, Doubt. So regardless of what giant or giants you're up against, you are not alone. You don't have to face these giants alone. God has promised that he will be with you and he will never forsake you. How would your life change if you started to really believe and behave as if God were with you and he were fighting for you? That's our big idea for today. Or what if we don't believe this? We doubt. We doubt God's presence. You know who didn't seem to doubt very much? David. Let's read our passage for today. I think it's going to come up. 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47. And David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. Pretty uplifting this morning. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. It doesn't seem like David had any doubt at all. We can't know that for sure. We can't know if he didn't, if he had a little bit of doubt in his heart. It's possible when he was going to gather those stones, he's shaking in his shoes and he's thinking, oh my goodness, what have I gotten myself into here? We can't know. What we can know is what we have in scripture. And that is David's words. And they are full of complete and total confidence that God is the one who is going to be victorious at the end of the day, not the Philistines. And that is some confidence. Look at his words again. The Lord will conquer you. The Lord will know that there, the world will know that there is a God in Israel. Everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people. He will give you to us. No doubt. There's no doubt there. And did you notice he said everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people? That is not just for the Philistines. That's for the Israelite army too. They're there listening to this. They needed a reminder of who it was they were serving. See, even our faith, it can be beneficial to our neighbor. And when I say neighbor, I mean anybody that God has brought into our life. So we can serve God with our faith. And we can also serve the people around us. Here's a question. How was David able to respond like that? He's the only person that did. One person saw the whole situation in a different light. We have Saul, David's brothers. That was a bunch. Uh, We have all the Israelite fighters. They all responded the same. It was fear because they had forgotten who it was they were serving. David doesn't seem to fear at all. So how is he different? How is it possible for him to respond that way when everybody else responded different? I think it was because his relationship with God was very different. David was in a type of relationship with God where it was like a daily grind kind of relationship. He communed with him every day. There is a lot in this story that I cannot relate to. First, I'm not a guy. I'm not a guy. I am not a fighter. My husband might disagree with that one. (laughs) I am not actually going to face a nine-foot-tall person who is threatening to enslave me. On the other hand, I can draw from, and I think we can all learn from, David's example that he sets for us and how he understood God's presence. And it's possible, maybe, by understanding and seeing David's example, we can emulate that. And we can get rid of that tiny, nagging voice in our head. That gentle giant of doubt telling us that God is not actually here. 
Remember I said that I learned about David and Goliath in Sunday school? Do you guys remember um, the flannel board lessons? Does anybody remember that? I grew up with those things. And in preparing for this, the memories came flooding back of learning about David and Goliath on the flannel board. I remember this green felt backdrop. And we had some cotton balls over here, and those were the sheep. And then you had David uh, depicted as a shepherd boy, and he's holding an instrument. So the lesson was that he worshipped God while he was a shepherd boy. I think to some extent the flannel board got that right. We do know that David uh, was as a worshiper. We see that pattern throughout his life. Um, he is a songwriter, one of the greatest ones um, in the Bible. He wrote over 70 of the Psalms. Um, and we know that he's an able musician, too, because just in the chapter prior, um, in 1 Samuel 16, he was chosen to be um, a musician for Saul in his court. So we know that he has these talents and these gifts. So it's safe to say, I think, David at some point, when he was out shepherding, he did worship God in song. But here's where I think the flannel board got it wrong. David didn't just sit there all day every day, tending to his father's sheep, and worship God. I can't believe that there is a teenage boy who just sat there and sang with nothing pulling for his attention. That's kind of hard for me to believe. But I can believe, and I think that Scripture alludes to the fact that David was someone who worshipped God in the demands of his day. I think that's exactly what he did. He saw God in the daily grind. It's possible he had an eternal perspective. He had a spiritual lens that he saw all that he did through. How do I know this? How do I come to this conclusion? I see it based on what he said in response to Saul. Saul told David, there is no way in the world you can defeat this giant Philistine. You're just a kid. Here's how David responded to him. Verse 34. Your servant used to keep the sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. The Lord who delivered me. David trusted God. He didn't just all of a sudden muster up all this great faith right in that moment to take on Goliath. His faith had been building through the years. He knew that God had been with him. It was God who delivered him. And it's possible that in this very moment, David realized, so that's why God allowed the, the lion and the bear to come in the first place is to prepare me for this, to build my faith for this. We can't always know why God allows things to come into our life, the difficulty and the struggle, and we question, but God always has a plan. We can trust that. David trusted God because he knew him. He knew God was in him, with him that moment in facing Goliath, and the moments leading up to it. And look what God did through him that day. God used David to take the Israelite nation and make sure that they are not going to be enslaved by the Philistines. An entire nation. That's what David did. So here is my question for you. What if you and I believed like that? Like David, that God himself is right here with you. What kind of effect would that have on you? We know God's presence is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. God doesn't usually whisk us away from struggle and difficulty. But God has been known to rescue. He has the power to do that, right? Um, he has been known to part the waters and to crumble the walls of Jericho. Or God's presence might mean that he just gives us the strength and the power to endure whatever it is we're going through. Like Paul and Silas. They are in torturous positions, and they are singing praises to God in jail. 
God gave them the power to do that, the strength. See, God, ever since the beginning of time, has proven to be near to his beloved creation. And that's me and you. And that changes absolutely everything. You know that, right? Starting in Genesis, throughout the rest of Scripture, God says, Do not be afraid. I am with you. He repeats this over and over and over. I think if God were to give himself a motto, that might be it. I am with you. And because he is with us, we don't have to be captive to a today-only perspective or even a next 10-year perspective. We can have something called an eternal perspective where we remember there are only three things that are going to stand the test of time. God, God's word, and the souls of people. That's all that's going to make it. And that really quiets the noise of everything else. It does for me. Those things that are way less significant than that. I'm going to ask you again. Do you truly believe, without a doubt, that God is with you every moment in your every day? Or is he too small? Or, is, or are you too small? And he's too big. He is too insignificant. You are too insignificant. I'm going to get this together. Your day is too boring, too unspiritual. Moms, this is your day. You're tending to your children. Your entire day is marked by mealtimes. My mom had five children. I remember this every day. It's just, what meal is it? Working moms, you sprint from one responsibility to another, and then you come home to loads of dirty laundry and piles of dishes in the sink. And that's not just a mom's job. I don't remember the last time I washed dishes in my house, thanks to Robert. He's a good man. But every day, it's ordinary monotony, and it just keeps happening. So maybe God just sort of checks out on you. And he goes on to something more important, more spiritual. That is a lie. Get it out of your head. It's a lie. God is here. It doesn't matter what type of work or responsibility is filling your day. God is there. Okay? Moms, this is your day. We love you so much. But for some, this is a very emotional day. That's okay. We never want the pain of some to pull from the joy of others. But I do recognize that this is a very complex day. And there's such a large continuum of motherhood. Do you realize that? We have spiritual mothers, like Shannon mentioned. We have lots of spiritual moms in in this church. Anybody who teaches the children with Mary Elizabeth. Mary Elizabeth is a spiritual mom. Dads, you're spiritual dads. I have spiritual moms here. Elisa, you are my spiritual mom. Janet, she is my spiritual mom. I am so thankful for them. They have done so much for me. You don't have to actually birth a child to be a mother, right? So, no matter what mothering may look like for you in this season of life, listen to me, sweet women. You are so important. And God is with you no matter what type of mothering you're involved in. And here's what I mean by that. I've adapted the following from Amy Young's work. To those who gave birth this year, God celebrates with you. To those who lost a child this year or any year, God mourns with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones, Every day, and you wear the badge of food stains, God sees you. To those who experience loss through miscarriages, failed adoptions, running away, God mourns with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes and prods and tears and disappointment, God knows about you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make it harder on you than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, spiritual moms, God has appointed you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, God celebrates you. 
to those who have disappointment and heartache and distance with their children. God is with you. To those who lost their mothers this year or any year, God is holding you. To those who experience abuse at the hands of your own mother, God is offering healing, his healing hand to you. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, where in the world would we be without you? To those who are single and long to be married, mothering your own children, God has a perfect plan for you. To those who step-parent, God walks with you in this very complex path. To those who envisioned loving grandchildren, yet this dream is just not meant to be, God is sufficient for you. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, God is already there. To those who have placed children up for adoption, God hears your prayers for those children. To those who did not, God has forgiveness for you. To those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and totally surprised, God gave this gift to you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart. We can all agree on that. And we have very real warriors in our midst. And I thank God for each and every one of you. In every circumstance, no doubt, God is with you. And you can bank on his words. Psalm 139, 7 through 10. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your hand will hold me. Matthew eighteen twenty. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am among them. There are more than two or three of us in here. We have all gathered to lift high the name of Jesus. The God that we are worshiping is in this room with us. That is amazing. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? John 14.16 I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. This is Jesus talking. You know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And Matthew 28, this is Jesus ascending back up to heaven, leaving his disciples. This is the final thing that he says to them. I am with you always to the end of the age. Friends, we can, strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit within us, have faith that God will give you the desires of your heart. We can, strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit within us, have faith that God will work all things together for the good of those who love him. We can, strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit within us, have faith that God will complete the work he has started in you. We can, strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit within us, have faith that God will never leave you or forsake you. If you are a child of God, if you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, God is with you. As you face college, we're about to get serious, job loss, cancer, rebellious children, aging parents, vindictive bosses, healing from abuse. If you are a child of God, if you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, God is with you as you are tempted to quit on your failing marriage. I have been there. I have been right there. And I'm just going to tell you something. I've got some good news for you. There is always hope in a risen Savior. We always have hope. It doesn't matter how grim the situation may be. Weren't we just reminded of this on Easter? The empty tomb is our victory the God we serve is alive. We have hope. If you are a child of God, if you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, 
He is with you as you muster up the strength to tell someone about a secret addiction, an eating disorder, an abortion you had years ago. If you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, and I'm going to hold up my hand right here and say that he is with you as you face infertility, because that's me. That's me and Robert. We are seven years married, and God has not granted us a child yet. And it's hard. It's so hard. And I want to panic. I just look at panic square in the face when I realize that I cannot control this, no matter how much I want to. But God is here. He is with me. He is with Robert and I. He is the great comforter. And I think that I can trust a God who has already won the greatest battle that there is. He has deemed me righteous, yet I am sinful and rebellious. He has united himself with me. He has already defeated death. He has already defeated sin. He has already defeated Satan and all of his forces. I think I can trust God to care for me and Robert as we struggle with infertility. question for you another one what is it that you're facing today do you know God is with you do you have a tinge of anger in your heart towards God because he's allowed something to come into your life and you don't want it there get that anger out of your heart it is like poison to you. It will do you no good. So confess it, get rid of it, and trust him. Trust in the finished work of the cross that all your sins are forgiven or they can be forgiven and worship him. This is a worshiping church. I get the privilege of leading worship occasionally with a band, and I just see week after week people who forget they're in a room full of people and they close their eyes and they worship God. It is, it's awesome. I love it. It's, it's humbling. I never get over it every single Sunday. This is a worshiping church. If there's anything that Janet has taught me, it is how to truly worship God. She's taught me a lot. That's one of the most important things. Because I get distracted by music and the sound of my own voice. I actually don't like it very much. But um, she has taught me how to just let that stuff go and to worship the one who saved me. I love that. But not only worshiping God in song, we can worship God in the demands of our day, just like David. It's a mental state of mind. It's the way our attitude is. God can be glorified and worshiped by how we go about and do our job, how we go about and love our spouse. If Jesus is not your Savior, if you are sitting here and you're thinking to yourself, I have no idea if God is with me. I'm not even a Christian. I haven't surrendered. I'm going to invite you to do that today. I'm going to invite you to cry out to him and surrender yourself. You are not going to be alone in this first step of faith. We're going to say a prayer with you so that you're not the only one saying it out loud. A2 family, will you help me? And there's nothing magical about this prayer, by the way. No magic in it. It's all about the heart, and God sees your heart. And he knows the decision that you're going to make for him. Let's pray. God, I have failed you. Say it out loud. Come on. God, I have failed you. Thank you. I need a savior to rescue me from my sin. Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I repent and I desire to be in your will. I trust you are with me today. Amen.
Amen. Thank you so much. Let's give God a big hand. We're going to close this service out with another song, or actually it's the same one we sang before, so reprise. So if you will stand and sing, let's do that. And also, we're going to have prayer partners at the end of the service. So if you have something that you need to pray about, come up here and get some prayer. Don't be scared. It's such a wonderful ministry and a blessing to pray with you. So just come on up and let's pray for you, no matter what it is. Have a blessed day. Thank you so much.